The AFC West, the home of the reigning Super Bowl champions, Super Bowl favorites, two-time Super Bowl champion, Patrick Mahomes. But outside of the Kansas City Chiefs, this division is awfully disappointing. When talking about the other three teams in this division, I could really start anywhere because all three of them have been disappointing in different ways. The Raiders are just consistently disappointing, having the same problems every single year, and they can't even get one of their top three players in Josh Jacobs to show up the training camp. The Denver Broncos are fresh hot off of one of the most disappointing seasons in modern NFL history. The team that was viewed as contenders for it all before the season started, barely won five games with Russell Wilson at the helm. On top of the fact they had a true coordinator in the head coaching position. And that presented us with some of the most dreadful football we've ever laid our eyes on. And lastly, we have the Chargers, a franchise with a history of disappointment. But I don't want to dwell on the past, I want to live in the present. And in the present, they blew a 27-0 lead in the postseason. This team has no more excuses for disappointment for their fan base, given they have Justin Herbert as their quarterback. Statistically, one of the best young quarterback performers ever in the NFL. And I believe he's only going to get better and smash more records just like he did in his rookie year, smashing seemingly every rookie quarterback record ever. And the Chargers aren't just a one-man show with Justin Herbert. They have a pretty good wide receiver room with Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, and the rookie Quinton Johnston. Although they do have a bit of an injury history, so we gotta hope they stay healthy this year. As well as Austin Eckler, one of the arguably best running backs in the NFL. He could do it all, and he's an absolute weapon for that offense and Justin Herbert, especially in the red zone. And the Chargers offensive line is the perfect mix of young players and veterans to hold it down, especially in the left tackle position with Rashawn Slater, one of the premier young left tackles in the NFL, accompanied by Corey Lindsley's veteran center snapping the ball to Justin Herbert, as well as a pair of young 2022 draft class guards on the left and right sides of Lindsley. And I absolutely love what this team has built up on the defensive front as far as the pass rush goes, with Khalil Mack, Eric Kendricks, Joey freaking Bosa, and then a pair of good D tackles in Austin Johnson and Joseph Day as well. And a good pass rush makes every secondary better. And they already have a good secondary with JC Jackson and Asante Samuel covering the wide receivers in the corners. And then you got strong safety and Derwin James, who's one of the better strong safeties in the NFL. Justin Herbert is great. The roster is loaded. I absolutely can't stand this coach, and the fact that they're in the same division as the Chiefs makes it kind of hard to win it. The roster is just too talented. I'm a big believer in Justin Herbert, and I don't expect them to have as many injuries as they did last year. I expect the Chargers to win around 11 games this season, and hopefully not disappoint their fan base yet again. The Denver Broncos are looking to right the wrongs this upcoming season in the NFL, but will they be able to do that with Russell Wilson at the helm? Sean Payton is now coming in to try to turn this team around, and I'm sorry, but I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Russell Wilson just looked broken last year. And then there were just so many odd things and articles about the things he says and, and what he does. And if you just pay attention like and like watch the games, like it was just odd and off. And I don't know if Sean Payton in at least one off season can turn that around immediately. So for this upcoming season in the NFL, I am out on the Denver Broncos. I, I just, I would rather be wrong in them doing well than be wrong in them saying they'll be good and then they're just in the same situation they were. I do think they'll win more than five games. This defense is excellent. They hold their opponents to something like 19 points per game. I've already talked about Denver on the channel a little bit, so I don't want to go into too much detail here, but they have a great defense. They got young receivers. They got decent running backs. The Javante Williams injury was a little more serious than people think, but I don't think they're going to win five games again. They might win like seven, maybe eight, but I don't see this team as a postseason contender, and I don't think they're going to win this division. This is a team that I need them to prove it to me before I could blindly follow them and get burnt by them again. The Las Vegas Raiders are going to have a tough year I believe in the NFL they have some talented players but I do believe the offensive line is closer to league average even though they have a stud in Colton Miller in the left tackle slot and the secondary is always just pretty bad on this team I've noticed the safeties are just not great the corners tend to struggle although they did sign Marcus Peters so we'll see what he could do for them but the pass rush is the premier focus of this defense with Max Crosby Chandler Jones looking to bounce back after a down year as well as drafting Tyree Wilson in the first round. The pass rush is going to be great. It usually is for the Raiders, but I just think there's a lot of flaws elsewhere, and there's a lot of holes that still need to be plugged on this roster in totality. Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers, Hunter Renfro, Michael Mayer, rookie tight end from Notre Dame, 
and Josh Jacobs. Those are the five marquee weapons of the Las Vegas Raiders offense. But here's the problem. Michael Mayer is a rookie, although he's promising, it's an unknown variable. Hunter Renfro, good slot receiver, he's good. Jacoby Myers, a decent wide receiver. Adams is elite in a class of his own, maybe the best weapon Jimmy G will ever play with in his NFL career. But then you have Josh Jacobs, who is literally one of the best running backs in the NFL. And at this moment in time of recording this video, he hasn't shown up the training camp, and I don't think he's gonna play this season. And I don't think this is a particularly hot take or anything, but I'm just not a big Josh McDaniels guy. I just, I, I have no faith in him as a head coach, especially on this Raiders team. The Raiders got some guys I like, as does every team in the NFL, but there's some frustrated players on the roster. And Jimmy G, I mean, I'm not sure how much faith you guys have in him. I don't like the head coach. Defense is a bit shaky with some holes. I'll put the Raiders at about six or seven wins here. I just don't think they're gonna make too much noise this year. And I still think they have some pieces to build with in the future. And Jimmy G might just be that bridge to the future for Las Vegas. Now saving the best for last here, and the only team in the AFC West that isn't disappointing in some way, shape or form, in the Kansas City Chiefs, led by Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. Mahomes is the best. He's the number one quarterback undisputedly in the NFL. And Andy Reid is the best coach in the NFL, you could argue as well. Best coach, best quarterback. You're probably the best team in the NFL if that's the case, until someone dethrones them. The thing with the Chiefs that intrigues me the most, and it's just fascinating, is how they seemingly do it every offseason, every other offseason, and it doesn't matter, and it doesn't affect their success whatsoever, is how they just interchange the pieces around Patrick Mahomes. The offensive line has already been revamped about twice now since he's been the Chiefs quarterback, including this offseason with left tackle Donovan Smith and Jawan Taylor from the Jaguars. And the wide receivers, running backs, Pretty much everything outside of the tight end as far as the offense goes gets interchanged very often in the Kansas City Chiefs system. Kelsey's been there since Mahomes' day one, and they're gonna be ride or dies for a few more years to come, I'm sure, until Kelsey retires. But the rest of the guys just get interchanged all the time. Guys sign one-year deals, guys come and go, and it just doesn't matter, because Mahomes just elevates the level of play of everybody. You could argue that the Chiefs wide receivers specifically are like bottom five in the NFL in terms of just like their talent, but it just doesn't matter. If Mahomes had some of these other receiving rooms, it would just be euphoric as to what he could do, but he's still gonna do euphoric things because he's Patrick Mahomes and it does not matter who he is surrounded with, he will elevate them to the level that is required to win. And with all that being said, anything else that happened around the Chiefs, like Eric Bietemi leaving for Washington and other random little things like that, just does not matter. It does not affect the trajectory of Mahomes and the Chiefs because Andy Reid and Mahomes together just figure it out. I think the Chiefs are gonna win this division. The sun's gonna rise tomorrow. The sky is blue and the Kansas City Chiefs are going to win the AFC West yet again. But the win number here is actually a little intriguing because the AFC as a conference has gotten a lot tougher and the Chiefs are playing all these tough teams and the teams that have improved drastically in the AFC. I like them at about 13 wins, but it would not shock me if the Chiefs fell to like 12 wins, like 12 and 5, just because the overall strength of the AFC. But in general, the Chiefs will be fine. They're going to continue to do what they do. 12 and 5, maybe 13 and 4 here for the Kansas City Chiefs and winning the AFC West. If you made it all the way through the video, you're an absolute G and you might as well drop a sub while you're still here. I like to keep my video short and sweet and gloss over the points that I find the most important. It's literally impossible to cover everything about every team and every player in the timely manner I give myself with these videos. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.